to the next level. He's got the size. He's got the skill set. He's, he's got the flair for the dramatic as well. Whenever his team needs a big bucket, he's able to go get it. And he's just got those intangibles. And his dad was a great player, 42-inch vertical, played a little bit semi-pro in ABA. So he's got it in his bloodlines as well. Goodson tries to force one up. And that'll be a shot clock violation. I couldn't agree more. To me, he is a winning basketball player. And if you have him on your team in the NBA, he will find a way to contribute to a team that wins. Yeah, and he just knows how to win. Uh, you know, you look at this young man here, 94 career victories for Matt Bolden. You start getting around the 100 victory mark at any level in college basketball, you know how to get it done. Yeah, if you win the lottery, and absolutely positively, without a doubt, take John Wall with the first pick. <laughs> And you had a pick in the second round and Matt Bolden's on the board, that would be a very nice draft. ESPN is your one-stop destination for celebrities, basketball stars of the past and future on Friday night. First at 7 Eastern, Terrell Owens returns to Dallas for the 2010 NBA Celebrity Game presented by Final Fantasy 13. And he'll face a West team coached by Magic. Then at 9 Eastern, Rivalry Week presented by Cisco continues, West Virginia and Pittsburgh in a backyard brawl on the hardwood. Big night of Friday Night Hoops on ESPN. Elias Harris just got a little bit of a curtain call. With 2.27 to go. As Manny Arap came on, Harris just fouled out, so he got the standing ovation, but there might be a couple of other Gonzaga standing ovations in the last 2.27. As they have pulled away from St. Mary's here in the second half. It was a three-point game at halftime, 39-36. And it has been domination by the Zags in the second half. Sports Nation presented by Toyota is coming up next. Shell Beetle and Colin Coward. And you look at it, this Gonzaga ball club and what they've done tonight, what they did against Portland last week, what they did at Memphis to win on the road. They're starting to round into one of those teams that if they get a favorable matchup, in the NCAA tournament, they could have a deep run. What would be, without naming specific teams, but do you think the bracket would kind of have to look like for Gonzaga to make that kind of a run? For instance, what would be a bad matchup? Are there a couple of teams out there that Gonzaga just doesn't want to see in their draw? Well, just like anybody else, they would want to see Syracuse, Kentucky, <laughs> Villanova, or Kansas on their side, but I believe they could probably match up with anybody else outside of those four. This Gonzaga ball club can beat anybody else on the neutral floor in the country, in my estimation. The curtain calls continue as Sacre goes to the bench. You mentioned Syracuse. They'll now be the only undefeated team in America on pure road games. Yeah, we had two, and St. Mary's was one. And now Bolden to the bench. Well, it was a tall task to come in here tonight with the conference lead on the line with an opportunity, national television audience, to come in here and establish themselves as someone to be reckoned with. It's gonna be awfully tough for St. Mary to come in here and get it done. Page can't hit, fumbling it out of bounds was Manny Arap. Well, Gonzaga, as we take a look at their resume, and those are only four of their key wins. You can add probably another four in terms of the quality wins that they have had outside of the West Coast Conference. Yeah, it's been very impressive in the RPI's strength of schedule. There's no doubt about this team. Right now, Bob, they're playing for a top four seed. And ranked 11th in the country, they definitely fit in that ring. Forcing one up inside and getting it to go is Williams. On the other side, St. Mary's, despite their impressive record at 21 and 3, RPI in the 40s, but their strength of schedule at 141. So this was going to be a, a signature game for them. They let this opportunity slip away. 
Are they now in a position where they have to win in Vegas to make it to the tournament? Do they have to run through? Is, is there a chance? Could they get to the championship game against Gonzaga and still conceivably get an, an at-large bid? It, it's possible, but with their history, especially last year, 26 wins to not get into the tournament with some of the victories they had, that was a tough pill to swallow. So when you're in conferences like the West Coast Conference, you got to take advantage and not leave it up to any anybody's decision. <laughs> Bull Kong with the dunk and Robert Sacre giving him the King Kong from the bench. <laughs> All right. They've earned the right to have a little bit of fun here at the end of the ball game. That game on the road where they lost in overtime to San Francisco woke up the sleeping giant. And the only question about this team is will, do they play hard every time out? And they definitely answered the call here tonight. Down to two on the shot clock. That did not hit the rim. It'll be a shot clock violation. And the shot clock will now be turned off. And for the 71st time in 75 games in this building, the Gonzaga fans can celebrate a win. Carthy Center, it looks a lot bigger, but you cram about 6,000 people in here, and they're all over you. One of the tough, toughest venues to come in and win, and one of the best venues to do a game. I always enjoy coming here, and I'm here so much, I think I'll have to pay some property taxes or something. I think I saw your name on the bottom of the Chamber of Commerce sign <laughs> downtown Spokane. A tremendous second half performance by Gonzaga. They had a three point lead at halftime and in the end they went going away a 19 point victory and Gonzaga now in first place of the West Coast Conference not just by a half game but by a decided margin those two losses that St. Mary's now has both to the Zags. Yeah impressive victory here in the second half by the number 11 team in the country. Our final score Gonzaga wins at 80 to 61 over St. Mary's. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, you can log on to ESPN.com. For Stephen Bardo and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Bob Wischusen. So long from Spokane. Now it's Sports Nation, presented by Toyota. Brian Bird, Doug Gottlieb, LaFonso Ellis, first place on the line in the West Coast Conference. St. Mary's on the road at Gonzaga. Omar Samhan, maybe the player of the year in the WCC. Uh, he went to work 16 in the first half. Samhan's lost about 60 pounds since he arrived on campus at Moraga. Time winding down, game tied at 36. Matt Bolden hits the three at the buzzer, averaging over 20 a game in the last five games. Second half, more Bolden, Fonz. Just when you think you have control of the basketball game, here comes Bolden, his ability to shoot it from deep. You know why he likes him? He's got good hair. He does. <laughs> Fonz has, Fonz the only guy I know has more hair than when he played. That's why he likes Bolden. Yeah, you definitely don't uh, suffer from that, Doug. But, but I will say this, Gonzaga in the second half opened things up. Yeah, Matt Bolden, his ability to use the backboard. He took over this game. Big, strong shoulders, creating space for himself. And that brings us to our big men on campus. So many guys to choose from.